Hello, fabulous friends and fans. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of November 15th, 2015. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This week, we are going to have Mercury meeting the sun in the sky at the very end of the sign of Scorpio before changing signs and Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius. Mercury is what we're talking about as a collective. It has to do what we're thinking about. And also, and as such, uh, speaks to the media and what's happening on a level of media as well. When the Sun and Mercury meet, as they do several times, we get a glimpse into the direction in which we are going. And we get a glimpse into how it is, and we start seeing this on the media as to what's next what our collective will is as far as what we're working on and what we're talking about as well. So right about now, because this is happening in the very late part of the sign of Scorpio, this is going to speak to advancements or information coming forward that has to do with um, medical procedures, particularly those related to reproductive organs um, and also secrets overall. So we can expect collectively uh, to have that conversation more publicly as to where it is that we want to go. And ultimately, there's a level of um, enlightenment here, right? There's a level of raising our standards that can be involved in this, but also a level of just truth, you know, like the light shining and showing us exactly where we are, or what before maybe we weren't talking about so openly, but now we are. Mercury will change signs. And so what we are talking about again, and especially the media focus is going to shift. And this is going to go into the sign of Sagittarius. Now, I actually think that this is going to be because it seemed like for a little while we were talking about uh, the migrant crisis, right? That was really as um, Saturn moved back into uh, the sign of Sagittarius. We were talking about it. And then it feels like in the last little while, we just sort of it wasn't as much a regular part of the news over the last few weeks. Well, now that's going to change. We're going to start talking about that that much more. And I do think that not only this week, but especially once we get to next week and we've got all this activation of Saturn in Sagittarius, the sun will be in Sagittarius. We're going to have a full moon in the opposite sign of Sagittarius. Mercury's involved in that full moon as well. We can expect a growing awareness and also growing developments where it comes to what's happening uh, with the people that are migrating and, and especially with all the different things that are taking place around the world in terms of, um, I'm thinking about like the Syrian migrations that are going on. I will create a separate video to talk about this a lot more because I think that in many ways, this is really encapsulated by the Saturn and Neptune square, which is slowly but surely perfecting and which is slowly but surely being activated that much more. So Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius is that first point of activation. So we should notice before the week is out, and especially once we get into next week, that we collectively start talking about and considering what um, is happening there in our world and especially what level of compassion are we going to bring and where our ethics lie, especially where it comes to borders and opening borders for that matter as well. Also this week we will have Venus speaking with Pluto in the sky. This is a conversation of motivation, of tension, and also some very strong feelings coming to the surface as well. So in at least one area of life, and very likely having to do with love or money, we are looking at, we are considering where it is that change needs to happen, and in some cases where it is that change must happen. So for some people this is going to be an understanding of what relationship has served its purpose. It could be an understanding of what source of income has served its purpose as well. But also with this particular configuration is that it is about motivation. It is about wanting to be more honest and wanting to live in a way that is more true to the very core of you. But also there's a desire that is built into this that has to do with moving forward with clarity and purpose and intensity in a way that allows meaningful change from the inside out 
to take place. So this to me is very much about matters of heart, matter of emotion, matters of what we want, whether it's in the material world or whether it's on a level of heart and love, all of that coming right to the surface and admitting to ourselves if there's a gap between what we want and where it is that we are and an understanding of the work that is required to take us there. With Pluto, you have to remember, Pluto is uh, you know, really big on surrender. With Pluto, you really don't have as much control as you think. And the more you try to have control, the harder you make it for yourself. So one of the best advice I can give you as I look at this configuration is surrender. Surrender, turn it over, allow yourself to have your feelings, have your realizations, understand what you have power over. But more importantly, you may realize that there's a lot that you don't right now or being willing to see the wisdom of where you are right now, knowing that nothing is permanent and that you can move yourself in a positive direction, especially the more willing you are to be honest with yourself and the more willing you are to actually do the work that meaningful change sometimes requires. That's the thing with Pluto. If it's gonna be meaningful change, you have to change in some meaningful way to have your life reflecting that and that is going to be part of the invitation of the cosmos now well thank you so much for watching the introduction this is a very very beautiful moment for me as some of you already know i'm so grateful that you are here late last week i announced uh, some things very close to my heart some beautiful things and you guys have been amazing you guys have been loving and supportive and I've been sharing this through my newsletter and social media, and now here we are. And it feels momentous. It feels so special to me. As you know, really the motivation behind everything I do, everything I do is to affirm that the universe is wise and loving. That really is it. And I have seen this truth. I have lived it. I have felt it. I have known this truth especially in retrospect, when I look at times when that felt like that was not the case, when it felt like life was cruel and unfair, I can now see how in its own way, in its own wisdom, it is part of what allowed me to move forward more and more. And so this truth, the universe is wise and loving, motivates everything I do and I am meant to, and I believe my mission is to affirm that in the world. The universe is wise and loving. And this last week, I presented to you, announced to you three new ways that I get to live that mission. I'm so, so very grateful for you for allowing me to do just that by you being here. And this moment really is everything. So one of the first things, brand new things that I have to announce is my book is now in Spanish. <laughs> so this is a huge, this is a huge moment for me because I remember some of you know, I've talked about it over the years. When I came here in late 2012, it really was an experience that changed my life being in Mexico. And now to have this book, have my book in Spanish, and really it is all I have to give, right? All I have to give is what I do through my work, and what I choose to affirm in the world. And having this book out there allows me to live that purpose that much more, but also allows me to give back, to give back a little bit of how much I have received from being here in this gorgeous country among these amazing people here in Mexico. So it really is a big moment for me. My book is in Spanish, and you can learn a lot more about that in my website and purchase that as well. The other big, beautiful, amazing announcement, I mean, this really is a dream come true. If you know me, if you've been watching me for a while, you know I love clothes, <laughs> I love jewelry, I love being a girl, and uh, that whole part of the human experience is just so awesome to me. And I have teamed up with the great people at Zazzle and present to you um, a line of clothing and jewelry that is all about affirming the universe is wise and loving. So this is my, the universe is wise and loving clothing and jewelry and hopefully so much more as well. I'm looking forward to creating iPhone uh, covers and all kinds of fabulous things. So if there's anything that you know that you would like to have, say, the universe is wise and loving, 
please do let me know through the contact form on my website or through social media as well. But this is such a great moment for me. I just, I love that this is going to be part of the affirmation and definitely fits into a larger vision that I have of creating just beautiful things and creating things that again, affirm this truth in the world. Sometimes quietly, sometimes blatantly. <laughs> as this can be quiet and blatant at the same time, but beautiful all around. So I hope that you love the design. Um, and I look forward to sharing even more designs as we move forward as well. So please do check out my new store on Zazzle, Nadia Shaw, right? What else is it gonna be? And let me know what you think. And again, if there's anything you wanna see and you wanna say the universe is wise and loving on your phone, on your mug, or whatever the case may be, let me know and we'll get started on that definitely to make that happen. And I look forward to your engagement and your ideas as well. Finally, the third big thing that I'm really, really excited about. So you all know personalized horoscopes, something I offer on my website. Um, this is a more personal look, an individual look at your sky, at your chart. And so recently I launched three new areas of focus that had to do with love and luck. Um, work, career, money, and luck, and also life purpose. They've been really popular. I'm so grateful for that. So as you know, right now, just the Rush and the Deluxe are available. So the the 60-day option is no longer there for now. It's just been paused for a little while, but you can still get a personalized horoscope if that is something that you'd like delivered to you within two weeks. But this is really exciting. I'm offering two new deluxe packages, and this really is based on you and the inspiration and the feedback that you've given me. So the first deluxe package has to do with business. It has to do with if you're an entrepreneur, or you own a company, or you wanna start a company, or you just wanna start doing work that feels more fulfilling and align your work with purpose. It could be anything from a company that's already established, or launching a new product or launching a new endeavor, whatever the case may be, regardless of the industry, in every industry, this is a package that is designed to give you an astrological business plan to success. So when you go onto the form and you see the form, it is very detailed. I ask you a lot of questions because I wanna make sure to answer your exact questions and to get to the information that's gonna get you to your goals. So wherever it is that you are in terms of your business, I get the, your birth data. I get the birth data of the business itself. If you wanna start a business, I help you choose a good day to start a business based on your industry, based on your goals. And however it is that you define success, this is going to be a plan that helps get you there. So whether it is that you just wanna you know, sell more, say you're starting a cell phone company, you wanna sell more phones, we can do that. I can look at that for you. If you actually have a business that's more spiritually oriented, you wanna offer retreats that are transformational to people, then we can come up with a plan for that. And if you have a nonprofit, we can look at that as well, how you can have greater impact in your company as well. So whatever it is that your aims are, this is going to give you, first and foremost, I will look at the charts, I will make sure all your questions are answered and you get that plan to move forward. And that will be followed up by a business plan, an astrological business astro plan that actually shows up in the mail for you. It's an action plan, we'll go month by month and I'll give you the key dates where you can take certain action steps, reach out to certain types of people, whatever the case may be. Depending on what it is that you want and what it is your industry is about, whatever that is, I will help create that action plan for you month to month as a part of helping you to utilize the stars to your advantage for your prosperity and your success. As an add-on, you can also choose to have a quarterly follow-up. So if you want, you can also add automatically every three months, I'll send you a form and you let me know how you're doing, how things have been going. Are you on the road? Have you been achieving your goals so far? And where it is that you'd like some tweaking to happen? If you've learned something new and wanna do something else, um, this will help you to revise that that business plan continuously to ensure that you get to where it is that you want to go. And the other deluxe package that I'm so excited about sharing is a, a wedding and marriage 
package. And this is so exciting to me because this really is about looking at how to make your relationship successful. This is two extended videos. First, it really combines a relationship reading with a luck reading. So it's about a luck and love reading together. So this is about looking at your relationship, yes, but also looking at how it is to create, whether it's a lasting bond or whether it is um, based on your shared goals and where it is that you plan to go together. It's really about looking at how to maximize the success that the two of you experience and to maximize the commitment. The second video is about choosing the right date for your wedding or a renewal of vows based on your goals. So whatever your goals are, you know, for your wedding, if you have a goal to have lots of kids and have a big house, then that will be a very different wedding day. <laughs> that will be a different chart than a chart that's about a couple that travels extensively. If you like having lots of friends around, that's one chart that's going to be a whole different day than the chart that speaks to a couple that really create their own sense of solitude and privacy and create their own sort of um, really a safe haven that only the two of them are in. So it depends on what kind of person you are, what kind of partnership you want to have, what kind of marriage you want to have, and also, of course, the wedding itself. So what kind of relationship, which is the marriage and the wedding day itself. And on top of that, it includes a special gift also to commemorate your special day. So whether it's renewing vows or it's the one and only time you believe you're going to get married, then this is something that's going to help ensure or help to gather some cosmic support so that it is truly that one and only time and is a successful and loving marriage for you. So you can learn about all the stuff that I've shared on my website, NadiaShaw.com. I'm so grateful for this moment, as you know. Um, you guys just mean so much to me. You guys give so much love, so much positive, positive energy. And I'm truly so grateful for it. I do want to say, I know I've mentioned this uh, before, if you've reached out to me on my website, then you very likely have uh, interacted with Ryan. <laughs> and Ryan really is one of my dearest friends for 20 years. Uh, we very much have this sort of uh, spiritual contract, you could say. And all of the stuff that I do, I really don't think it would happen unless I had him on my side being my cheerleader and just providing me with, you know, so much encouragement and his insistence that I live up to my potential. <laughs> I just, uh, I just hope that everybody out there can give a big burst of love to Ryan because uh, he truly is a big part of what I do and how I've been able to do all of this for as long as I have been. So really very grateful to him. Final note, final small note here. Okay. The universe has me globe trotting this year a lot, which is awesome, right? My Sag Moon loves that. And I will be in Boston this coming weekend. So the weekend of the 21st, I'm going to be in Boston for my cousin's wedding. So this should be exciting. I thought it would be fun to open up a little bit of time to see um, some people, to meet some friends and fans for consultations. Now. Uh, you know, I'll be honest, like literally, I think I'll only have time to do two or three readings at most. And they will take place Sunday, the 22nd, in the late afternoon and early evening. So that's Sunday, the 22nd in downtown Boston. If you are in the downtown Boston area, can get there uh, sort of easily and would like a consultation, would like to meet and have an in-person consultation, please reach out to me on my website, NadiaShaw.com, and we can move forward and make that happen as well. I know that this whole year where I've been traveling quite a bit and meeting friends and fans, it really has meant so much to me. Like I can be so much like just behind a camera, behind a computer screen. And especially like when I do personalized horoscopes, I am, you know, interacting with your chart. It's not even that I have a person in front of me. As much as love is there, as much as trust is there, it has really reaffirmed my commitment to what I do, to actually meet friends and fans and to, to get that hug, to feel that love and to realize that my work means something and that this, this thing, you know, this affirmation, the universe is wise and loving is something that 
a lot of people feel and a lot of people experience and a lot of people want to be part of affirming that in the world as well. And it really has meant so much to me, it has meant the world to me. So I would love to meet you if you can. Um, so yes, please do reach out downtown Boston, Massachusetts, uh, Sunday, late afternoon, early evening, that time slot. It would be wonderful uh, to meet you and give you a hug and connect with uh, friends and fans in person as well. So after all that, <laughs> all that wonderful adventurous stuff, how all this speaks to you in your sign, all the stuff I talked about at the beginning, right? Let's now get to the signs, get to the actual horoscopes, how all of that speaks to your sign is coming up right now. Hello fabulous Aries, this week Venus and Pluto will speak and this is going to speak right to the heart of you, specifically relationships, okay? So it's your sign, Gemini's, and your opposite sign, Libra, who are going to be most affected by this energy, especially where it comes to matters of heart. And the big lesson with this particular conversation is acceptance, accepting what is for what it is recognizing your part in any kind of dynamics that haven't really been working out and also at the same time recognizing that where it is that you could make changes to move yourself towards greater love. Some of you will experience this in the context of a relationship while others it might not necessarily be in the context of relationship but rather in your understanding of what has been and where it is that you desire to go. If you are one of those people just getting to know someone, I think that this energy actually will speak much stronger to people in an established, committed relationship. But if you're just getting to know somebody, this could be a time when you hear some news or see a side to them that you hadn't anticipated and not really sure how you feel about it. So we are going to continue to have Venus doing some interesting things while she's moving through your opposite sign. So. Um, you know, see it, trust yourself, you'll know what it is to do. And if you're not sure what to do just yet, next week will bring a whole other level of clarity as well. Where it comes to other areas of life, a big focus this week is going to be on money, specifically what we call other people's money. So this has to do with grants, loans, bursaries, insurance payments, tax returns, benefits that you might qualify for as well, inheritances as well. And this is when you're very likely to get a letter or get some news or feel like you finally got an answer, regardless of what way it goes. A lot depends on what's happening in your unique birth chart. Regardless of what way it goes, this is going to be the time when you feel like that letter came through, you got the answer that you needed, you got the clarity that you needed as well. So at the very least you know where you stand and that you get that answer so you understand where it is that you're going also. In a more personal sense, uh, those of you who are engaged in any kind of process of psychoanalysis or you know the slow rebirth that happens in that sacred space, this can be a time of a big psychological breakthrough. So if you are going to therapy and you've been going, you know, week after week, you've been building that relationship with your therapist, make sure you schedule, <laughs> make sure you don't skip the, the session this week because it is very likely to be one that helps you tremendously and really helps to shift your energy in the best possible sense. Hello, fabulous Taurus. This week, Venus, your ruling planet, will be speaking with Pluto. Now, this particular conversation is going to be playing out for you in interesting ways, mainly in terms of what's happening in your actual work environment, okay? So this isn't so much about like big lofty career goals or where you think you're headed in the bigger picture, but more like what's happening on the level of a day job. And this is where you are going to see what works and what doesn't. If you have been flirting with someone, right, at work or, you know, wanting to express some interest in someone, um, this is going to be a time where you really get some insights that show you which way it is that you might be going with this or not. This can also be a time when you're, you know, you might be coming at it completely innocently or not but it could be taken in a certain way that you don't want it to. So my advice would be hold back on any kind of office flirting or workplace flirting, or if you work in a store, store flirting, hold back on that just a little bit right about now. 
And if something's meant to happen, as you know, any connections are meant to happen, they have a way of coming together. Uh, for others of you out there, if you are in an established bond, it's not so much about connecting with others. If you're in an established bond, um, there is going to be some question about how much time you're making for each other and what needs to change so that you either are part of each other's lives like in a more balanced way. So if you're not spending enough time or you're spending too much time, all of that is going to come to the surface now as part of creating some meaningful changes so that you experience a greater sense of balance. But overall, when your ruling planet and Pluto are speaking in this way, it tends to be a time when you can be very much on edge, especially emotionally. So be patient with everyone around you and know that perhaps some of the things that are going on that you're feeling is more about you and your own process rather than necessarily what's happening with anyone else. Also, this week, when we look at what is happening, the sun and Mercury meeting in your opposite sign. Now that is speaking to love very directly. And those of you in a committed relationship are going to feel this most. And this is that talk that changes everything. This is that clarity that helps you know where it is that you're going with this person. That much needed talk, that much needed direction, all of that starts to fall into place now very nicely. Whether you're in a committed relationship or this is a business partnership, this is going to be a time that helps you to feel that you're moving in the same direction, in the right direction, and in a direction that feels very bright and promises greater of everything good, greater prosperity, greater security, and greater progress all around. Hello, Fabulous Gemini. This week, we have got some very interesting activity happening in a part of the sky for you that is the flirty part of the sky, okay? So as I spoke earlier to Aries, it is Aries, Geminis like you, and Libras that are going to be experiencing um, romantic ups and downs or interesting developments or secrets being revealed more than the other signs might. So this week in many ways will be pulling at heartstrings for you more than it necessarily would for other signs, especially if you are not in a committed bond, especially if you're just getting to know somebody or you're open to meeting somebody new. This can be a time when you attract someone that shows you something in yourself that surprises you, right? That makes you realize like, okay, wow, this is what I'm attracting. What's going on here? I will say this also though, to, to be fair, sometimes it's not about you doing something, right? Sometimes it's just, it just happens. It's just the way it is, right? Um, there's this saying here in Mexico, very loosely translated, like, you know, when you attract somebody who's maybe not so amazing or ends up doing something kind of weird or creepy or whatever, and there's this saying in Mexico, like when you say, like, how, how did I attract this person? What did I do? You walked. <laughs> that's it. You walked. You existed. And that's what happens in life when you're open to meeting new people. Sometimes as part of that openness, you'll attract all kinds of different people. And as part of learning about what it is that you really want. So keep that in mind. Okay. There might be a little, and I hate to say it, but yeah, this energy just looks a little, you might like, it's just a little bit, uh, where the likelihood of you attracting somebody that really is not where you are and, um, and especially not somebody very evolved or very aware is possible right about now. So take any experience for what it is, knowing that while you can enjoy it, also know that people have all these other layers that you may not necessarily be aware of. If you're getting to know somebody, uh, one of those layers might peek through and you might have to ask yourself, okay, how do I feel about this? Does this work or does it not? Those of you in an established bond, I really don't think that this is going to speak to your experience as much. It's going to be much more about Mercury moving into your opposite sign. Your ruling planet will meet the sun and then move into your opposite sign. So your ruling planet will meet the sun in the part of the sky for you that has to do with work and the workplace. So it looks like you are on the ball. You're very much in your zone and you'll have at least one moment where you feel like a shining star in the workplace. And once we take you a little bit further into the week, Mercury changes 
signs, and this is going to be for those of you in an established romantic bond or in a business relationship, just having a whole other level of understanding, of talking, uh, of clarifying things, and being able to share and communicate um, in ways that feel that ultimately bring you together that much more. Hello, fabulous Cancer. This week, you've got a choice to make, especially where it comes to matters of heart, matters of love. Are you going to focus on the past or are you going to pay attention to what's happening right in front of you and where it is that you are going? Because if you focus too much on the past, especially right around now, then chances are in some ways it's going to kick up a lot of really strong emotions. Have you looking at yourself, examining things very differently? Have you like sort of going through these different emotional ups and downs? But you don't have to do that and you don't have to choose that. I would hope instead that you would tap into the amazing opportunity that is there, especially if you're open to meeting somebody new. The opportunity that is there now that really illuminates the possibilities for your life, that helps you feel clearer than a long time on a level of mind, on a level of understanding, and helps you make a connection that truly has a very strong potential. So this is your choice. Are you going to focus on the past? or maybe what someone from your past is doing, my advice would be no. <laughs> that would be my advice because the energy that is asking you to move forward in love is so good. There's um, a genuineness to it. There's a connection there to be had on a level of mind and understanding and also an understanding of direction and the things that matter to the heart of you also mattering to this person as well. That if you focus on that, then you'll find yourself going in a direction that creates so much happiness almost instantly this given week. So that's happening on a level of heart and especially that's happening on a level for those of you who are open to meeting somebody new um, or just getting to know somebody. So that's where the energy gets really, really good. But if you're in an established bond or you're not, but you're thinking too much about a past bond, then this can be a week where your imagination is going all over the place and you go on a little bit of an emotional roller coaster, which really would not serve you well. And as I said, also where it comes to creativity and fertility, the energy is so high right now. So if you uh, want to have a child, you've got lots of energy to make that happen. If you, you know, want to have a more meaningful connection with your child, great opportunities to make that happen now as well for yourself. If you want uh, to just be more creative, right, to give some time and love to a baby of your own, whatever that creative project may be, or if you're an artistic creative person, which a lot of cancers are, then this can be a time of creative breakthroughs that promise tremendous prosperity just a little bit further down the road. So as much in life, you have choice. And you know, it doesn't have to be either or as well. You can have those strong memories, those strong feelings, and channel that into a commitment to live your life right now in the present that much more fully. And if you do that, then this week is going to be one that is characterized by a lot of fun and a lot of laughter as well. Hello, fabulous Leo. This week we've got the sun, your ruling luminary, meeting Mercury in the sky. And when this happens, which happens a couple times a year, a few times a year, it's a moment of clarity for you, especially. And especially where it comes to where it is taking place. And for you, it's happening at the very bottom of your chart, where it comes to matters at home and what's happening on the home front. So if there's been something going on in like with the physical structure, right? You're not really sure, you know, why is it always hot in that corner? And why is it always cold there? Why is that vent not working? Um, this is going to be a time when you get your answer, where you get that clarity and a solution could just show up for you. Um, this could also be a time when it's like that thing that's been so obvious, <laughs> so clear. Now, okay, with a little bit of information makes all the difference as well. So this is a time to keep your eyes open and keep your mind open to different suggestions suggestions and different ideas, especially where it comes to matters of the home front or the physical structure to help yourself uh, solve like little pesky things that don't even need to be there and have very simple solutions. 
where it comes to matters of heart. Um, we do have Venus speaking with uh, Pluto this week. So all of us in some way are going to be feeling very much like uh, strong emotions, heart on the surface. And for you in particular, it is likely to be set off by conversation. And this could be a conversation that gets you thinking in all kinds of ways that surprise you. Um, and maybe even get a little bit, you know, be mindful of this, but maybe even get a little bit like, what did they mean by that? What was going on there? And have you like sort of going around and around in your mind as to what that meant, uh, regardless who the person is, whether it's with someone new or in an established bond. Well, the only way you're really going to know is if you have that opportunity, if the situation calls for it to actually speak to that person. I would say maybe give it just a little bit of time before you do, okay? Mercury is going to move into a really romantic part of your sky towards the later part of the week. So once you get you to the very later part of the week, even though this energy is still going to be there, what's really great about that is conversations either return you to love or open you to new love at that. And remember, when love is healthy, there's a sanity to it. So if there's somebody around in your life right now, somebody you're getting to know, um, who's behaving in ways that maybe aren't so nice or aren't so fair or aren't so respectful even, according to your definition of success, then you can choose to say, okay, you know what? That doesn't work for me, okay and be open on a heart level to what else might be available to you. And this week does promise options, options that start opening up to you with just a little bit of conversation, a little bit of willingness, and a little bit of being in the moment. You can find the possibility of a flirty inter interaction where a heart connection can be made. Hello, fabulous Virgo. This week we have got a meeting of your ruling planet and the sun in a part of the sky for you that has to do with neighbors, siblings, cousins, and just community running around your neighborhood kind of activities. And it's going to be just these kinds of people and these kind of events that are going to be keeping you very busy right about now. And I do think you're going to get a chance to spend an extended amount of time with some of these types of people in your life this week also. And it could very well be one of these people who sort of lights up an awareness for you where you have a conversation and you realize something and it just shifts something in a very important way in your heart and in your spirit as well. In many ways, what is taking place this week will bring to illumination and will make lighter what was so heavy not too long ago while Saturn was moving through the sign of Scorpio. So between 2000, late 2012 and part of this year as well, over the summer of this year, uh, we had... Saturn moving through the same part of the sky, making those types of relationships ones that you had to pay attention to even when you didn't, you had to face some truths even when you didn't want to. Well, this is going to be lightening that whole load, re re allowing you to be aware of um, blessings and rewards that come from Saturn's promises. So Saturn ultimately says that if you do the work, you'll reap the reward. If you're honest with yourself, you will manifest. And it really is about that balance and recognizing that time is finite. So as much as you give is as much as you will get. And because time is finite, make the most of every moment. And that's what you'll be invited to do with just these types of people. And also at the same time, you will now reap the benefit. You'll be finding yourself reaping benefit of what maybe before felt kind of challenging. On a level of heart, we've got all this energy, uh, very interesting energy taking place. But for you, yes, in a way, all of us in some way will be feeling more vulnerable on a heart level, maybe feeling a little bit uh, on a bit of an emotional roller coaster. But for you, and particularly when I look at how this is playing out for earth signs, it is a lot more about work, 
or the work that you're doing, the place that you find yourself in work, and what is happening on that front in terms of the love that you're bringing or just in the love department as well. But for you in particular, I think that this is gonna speak more to finances. So what's happening on a level of your financial reality and how you feel about that and where it is that you desire to go, what it is that you desire to do on that front as well. So what I love about this particular week for you is that there is a level of honesty taking place with you in terms of, you know, what can you afford? What can you not afford? What do you want? What needs to change so that you can get where it is that you want financially as well? And where it is that you have to surrender, all of us. I mean, I don't care who you are. You could be a multi-billionaire. There's an appreciation that comes from knowing that at times you can't get what you want. And even if you know that you're very abundant, you've been very blessed, and yes, you can have at the same time, sometimes, and again, it doesn't matter if you're a billionaire, sometimes it can't get what you want. And this might be one of those times when it's like, okay, I want this, I wanna spend this money, I wanna get this, I wanna have that thing. But then within you, either there's doubt or there's guilt, or maybe just on a practical level, uh, there might be some issues playing out there that are saying, you know, nope, not at this moment, not right about now. So do be mindful of that. I think that for your opposite sign, for you, it's very much about what you have, okay? It has to do with like the things that you own and it has to do with the cash that you have in your pocket. For your opposite sign, it's gonna be more things about credit. So it depends what you think is, uh, is better or not, or just take it as your unique situation. Know that you are abundant, know that the universe actually is going to meet your needs. And it's very possible now that money will find you, but you might feel a little bit like, I don't know, if you have some healing to do on a level of money, this is gonna be a time when some money can come in and has you really looking at yourself in order to accept it. So it's as if I'm seeing someone trying to be generous with you, but you're feeling like, okay, maybe this comes with strings. You don't really know how you feel about this. Um, you want to maintain a level of independence. Um, and so that's one way this energy can play out as well. And especially where it comes to if you're getting to know somebody, if you're dating somebody, you have Jupiter in your sign this year. Jupiter is doing lots of amazing things right now over the course of this year and into the next year as well. If money is what you want, you will have that and more of it. You are abundant and even more greater opportunities are finding you now. So don't let any kind of illusion get in the way of that appreciation. And if there is any kind of feelings that come up, particularly around money, this ultimately is gonna be your chance to heal that so that you can be more open to prosperity as well. Where it comes to matters of love, make sure love and money, I mean, I think if it's love, love and money mixing, that's gonna be part of what might make you feel uncomfortable, especially if it's someone that you're just meeting or just getting to know as well. There might be some interesting play happening there where it comes to uh, love and money. If you are in an established bond, this week is gonna play out a little bit differently for you. It's gonna play out much more with you just having meaningful conversations with the person you love. Maybe there's a purchase that you wanna make that your partner doesn't agree with, that your partner is saying, no, don't do that, or how could you do that, go return that, whatever the case may be. So be open to that process and be okay with that and know that ultimately it's about finding that right place of peace within you. That's really what it comes down to and finding that place of abundance within you ultimately can change your situation, your financial situation very dramatically. So wherever it is you are right now, as you know, every moment is a state of flux. Something's always changing. And this is part of the process that the universe is helping you to move towards greater prosperity as part of this bigger plan playing out right now and in the months to come. Hello, fabulous Libra. This week, we've got your ruling planet in your sign speaking with Pluto. So in one sense, because it's in your sign, because Venus is in your sign, your ruling planet, you feel that much stronger and able to work with this energy that much more easily. But this is Pluto after all. Pluto is a very strong energy. 
And Pluto is in some ways about, in a lot of ways about what you don't control. And sometimes in this type of conversation, what doesn't feel fair as well. And in the context of love, whether you're in an established bond or you're open to meeting someone new, this can be one of those times if you're just getting to know somebody, this could be one of those times when some truth comes out or some moment happens where your intuition starts, you know, the spidey sense starts going and it may feel like, okay, that, I wish that wasn't the case. It could be like that. It could be that someone that you've been flirting with for a while and have really been interested in, you now found out that, oh, actually they've been in a long-term relationship. They got a kid on the way, <laughs> something like that. Uh, this could be also a time when you're meeting people and realizing more and more that, you know, with this type of conversation, you can pick up on what's really going on with people and it isn't always what they say. And I think that this is part of the message um, really for a lot of the air signs this week and your opposite sign, Aries, that when you are connecting with others, things might not always be as they seem on the surface. So that's one thing to mind as well. But this could also be, I gotta say, some really obsessive feelings kicking up in you and surprising you. You are an air sign after all. You know how to create that space and that healthy distance. And so finding yourself on an emotional roller coaster might actually be a little surprising. Just accept it for what it is. Accept what you're feeling, and that will help you navigate this time that much better. We do have Mercury and the Sun meeting in a part of the sky for you that is decidedly financial. This will bring with it some opportunity, some progress, some growth, and some good news all around that it looks like you've actually been working towards for quite a while now, like this breakthrough moment that happens where before there was resistance, now it seems like this pathway just opens up that much more clearly. If you get a chance, to have a telephone interview or to connect with somebody, uh, to speak with somebody on a level of creating greater prosperity for yourself, you will find the perfect words to make that happen for yourself. So whether you're in an established bond or just getting to know somebody or open to meeting somebody new, strong feelings might get kicked up. So trust your intuition. You'll know when it's about you and your own stuff that needs to heal and when it is not and accept if you're having some really powerful emotions. And my advice would be focus in on your money. Focus on your money and you will find yourself being that much more empowered by the prosperity and the opportunities to create greater prosperity that find you now. Hello, fabulous Scorpio. This week, the Sun and Mercury will meet in your sign. So these two planets are going to meet in your sign. Next week, well, before this week is out, Mercury will leave your sign. Next week, we're going to have the Sun leaving your sign as well early in the week. So this really is, in many ways, sort of the setup, if you will, right? This is that, okay, I get it. I know who I am. That's really what matters here. And it is about that I am. When you have the sun meeting Mercury in the sky in your sign, particularly in the last few days, um, then this tends to be a time when you get clear about who you are in some key situation. So who you are ultimately determines pretty much all of your experience, who you know yourself to be, rather. It's not about who you are in terms of what other people are telling you or how other people are perceiving you. What you know about yourself, what you know about yourself to be true in many ways is a, is a pair of glasses. And that's how you view the world. You view the world, I am, and that's at the core. And that determines a lot of what you believe about yourself and what is possible and how it is that you are interpreting the world around you. And that in turn can determine a lot of not only the experiences you have, but also um, what you believe is possible, the chances that you take. Now, that's not to say that um, there aren't factors in life that you don't have control over. But really, when you get to that core of knowing who you are and getting clear on who you are, there are certain advantages that start to happen and it starts to feel like life is going more your way. And that is what is promised to you now. That clarity that says, okay, this is who I am. 
And that also means that you're going to get a clarity into who you are not. And that in turn will bring clarity into what actions you can take now that ultimately will help you in many ways, whether it's help you to learn more or help you to, even if you're looking at it from a level of um, connecting with people, uh, really accomplishing things that are much more meaningful to you in a bigger way. All of that becomes much more possible with that clarity and understanding of yourself that is at the root of some really great uh, possibilities that are available to you this week. Where it comes to matters of love, a lot of the energy for love for you, there's a private quality, there's a past quality. This is true for, in particular, for the water signs out there. There's a very past quality, what was um, deciding whether or not you're going to indulge in familiar emotions uh, or like indulge thoughts that ultimately are not to your advantage, aren't going to help you to move forward. And I feel like with the sun and Mercury together in your sign, it's like you can see what um, is best for you. You can see what a more elevated way of being but yet it's so tempting. It's so tempting to like sort of go into these emotions and, and sort of be in them and to wonder and think and even maybe obsess a little bit about what was and who was and what it meant and why and all that kind of stuff. So it's up to you. My advice would be take maybe a little bit of time, right? When you find yourself going there, say, okay, I'm gonna give myself an hour. <laughs> I'm giving myself an hour to be in this energy and then you can decide not to be in it. And that's something as a Scorpio, you know how to do. You know how to make a decision and go a whole new way. And right about now, you'll have that clarity to understand what is a better way for you. Whether you're open to meeting someone new, you're getting to know someone or in an established bond, a part of you might be thinking about what was, what could have been, what if, these are the types of things that are coming up for you right about now. And my best advice would be to acknowledge that this part of you is there and then be at peace with it and instead focus on you. Because with the focus on you, you will find that love just has an easier flow to it. With the focus on you, things seem to fall into place that much more clearly and in a way that ultimately brings you a sense of inner calm. Hello, fabulous Sagittarius. This week, we have got all this energy taking place, first of all, in the sign just before yours with Mercury meeting the sun. So your dreams are gonna be a very vivid place. It'll be a very real experience while you're sleeping and going through your dreams. But this also can be a time, you know, that you wake up and all of a sudden you understand things so differently. Like it really just feels like a light bulb just clicked on for you. And so if there ever was a time to be really mindful of what you're dreaming, keeping that dream journal, this would be it. With Venus moving through part of the sky for you that has to do with friendship, and speaking with, um, speaking with Pluto in a financial part of the sky. So one of the, the larger lessons for you right now, throughout this decade actually, and into the next, is to surrender your finances, right? It's about knowing, okay, yes, you deserve abundance, you deserve prosperity. Now you're gonna turn it over and trust that life will lead you there. And when you feel really strong feelings around money, you learn from them and you learn about your own self-worth in the process as well. So this is gonna be part of the learning that is taking place for you now. I do think that a friend might be part of the trigger. It might be that a friend asks you for money or needs some money and you're not sure how you feel about it if you have it. You're not sure if you wanna give it. If you don't have it, you don't wanna say that you don't have it. So there could be a little bit going back and forth in that regard. Um, ultimately, it is about doing what makes you feel at peace with yourself and doing ultimately whatever you do from a place of inner abundance. But if it doesn't feel right, I mean, this is very like spidey sense energy. So all of us in some way will have like a heightened sense of spidey sense, but also a lot of what we're feeling colored by what has been before our past, maybe even some of the things that have hurt us in the past. So all of this ends up being part of the mix as you are interacting, uh, particularly with your friends right now. 
where it comes to matters of love, it could be friendship. If you're open to meeting someone new or you're interested in someone who's currently a friend, this could be a really interesting time where friends play a role in um, how you're understanding love and your deservedness to have love and what kind of love you believe that you want or are meant to have. If you are in an established bond, I think that the energy is actually gonna be very different for you in that sense. It's gonna be a lot more about the energy that is building. It's gonna be a lot more about Mercury moving into your opposite, uh, sorry, Mercury moving into your sign and preparing for a full moon that's happening next week. I will be here to talk about it then. But this ultimately says something to me about the direction in which you believe and understand that you're heading in the context of matters of heart. And wherever it is that maybe you haven't dealt with something in an established bond, or you need to see something about yourself, that understanding is coming. Mercury moving into your sign is just the very beginning of a process that is really gonna to come to a fuller fruition once we get you into next week. Hello, fabulous Capricorn. This week, Pluto in your sign will be speaking with Venus at the very top of your chart. So this is what astrologers call your house. So this really is like your home in the sky, if you will, making Venus moving through this part of the sky that much more meaningful to you. So we've got this conversation taking place. And this to me says that there's a sacred lesson playing out here for you, and that is to understand that there are some things that you do control, some things that you don't. And your job is to do what you can and then surrender the rest. Big lesson here. Do your best, especially where it comes to what you desire to achieve in the world, the goals that you have, and turn over the rest. Once you do it, you surrender it, and you trust that what is meant to return as a result of your effort will find its way to you. Another part of this very special lesson, this sacred lesson playing out, is about being that which you wish to accomplish. So it isn't about necessarily accomplishing a thing and then you become a type of person, but it's about becoming the person who would achieve what it is that you desire. And that's really a very important distinction that is playing out in your life right about now. There might be a wish that you were, you know, five steps, 10 steps ahead of where you are, but where you are is actually pretty amazing. Now, whether this is a career goal, uh, whether this is about life purpose or your higher direction, if you will, whether this is about legacy and what it is that you want to be remembered for, all of this is gonna play out as part of these sacred lessons. Being who it is that would achieve those things. And also, once you do it, surrender it. Once you take action, surrender, that good things will return as a result. Where it comes to matters of heart, it could be right about now because Venus is right there. It could be right about now that some element of work and achievement and career is also tugging at some heartstrings as well. It could be that you might be, I will say this, there's almost like a putting somebody on a pedestal, okay? So whether they're connected with you through work or not, you might be putting somebody on a bit of a pedestal and really feeling a, a strong draw and looking at them being like, yes, I want to be with this person and not necessarily realizing that people have these whole other sides of them and motivations and different things that are playing out that you might not necessarily know. So that's part of the understanding as well. I mean, it's almost as if you're looking up and it's somebody that you think is in some way where it is that you desire to be. And that ultimately does not lend itself to an even playing field. So that is part of your sacred learning right about now, particularly if you are open to meeting someone new or just getting to know someone. And even if you're in an established bond, I feel like this is very grass is greener, right? Energy playing out here where you might be thinking or looking or considering elsewhere instead of looking at what it is that is good about where you are right now. So be mindful of that. This is an energy that is going to change and fluctuate 
If you find yourself thinking about someone else and you think that's so much better, you might not know all the details just yet. So it's good to have that appreciation, if only within you. So overall, it does look like the big picture is what matters to you now. And making the most of this time so that you actually can have it count for something in the bigger picture is part of what's gonna matter for you now. Where things are lighter and easier right about now has to do with your friends. So a good talk with a good friend really can put your head on right. <laughs> so make sure that you are reaching out and talking to somebody that you trust and that will help so much of this energy just resolve itself so that you can bring your, yourself back into alignment, especially on a level of mind, what you know is good for you and where it is that you know you desire to go. Hello, fabulous Aquarius. This week, we have got all this energy happening in the very top of your sky and a part of the sky for you that has to do with career and achievement and goals. We have this sun meeting Mercury um, in a part of the sky that speaks to, really speaking to uh, someone who is an authority figure or in some way can help you move up the ladder. So this is really good energy if you are you know, planning to schedule an interview. I would say do that early this week, particularly if it is an interview uh, for some position that you want. So it is early this week when you've got lots of cosmic support to make the right impression, but also to make your most brilliant self come forward. I also think with this particular energy, it's going to speak to your desire to communicate something, to share something. And I feel like you're gonna be getting some clarity or some understanding into where it is, not only that you desire to go, but on a level of life purpose, it might be on a level of career, it might be just in a larger sense, and it might also encapsulate matters of heart as well. But there's this vision that is showing up for you now, and there's a little bit of longing showing up for you now as well, where it is that you desire to go in life and in love and in money. So you have to, one of the things, ways you can help yourself is to find that right balance. If you are open to meeting somebody new or just getting to know somebody right about now, I think that this is going to be a time, it's just the, the intuition. I don't think anything's going to be so clear, really. I think that you'll feel something, but you'll be like, okay, should I be feeling this? Should I not? Um, even though you're not one to not trust yourself, it's like on the surface, there's no good reason not to uh, embrace the moment and trust it and think everything's okay. But there might be something within you. It might just be your own fears, your own uncertainty that is kicked up right about now. And ultimately, you being aware of that is one way to move beyond that. So if you find yourself feeling uncomfortable, particularly if it is somebody that really is, you know, brand spanking new, <laughs> then be mindful of that. But I do also think as I look at this that it might actually be, especially where it comes to matters of heart, I think there might be a little bit of a cultural divide that you don't necessarily realize. So it might be that that person is actually expressing great love, but because of some difference in language or culture or otherwise, you are interpreting it a different way or you're seeing, okay, I can interpret it all these different ways. So be mindful of that as well, especially where it comes to meeting somebody new or someone that you're just getting to know. Ultimately, we're building towards a powerful full moon that's happening next week that is really going to speak right to the heart of you and what you really want in love and looking at where you are. So regardless of what's taking place now and the feelings that might be there, know that the even bigger breakthroughs and understandings are actually ones that you are building towards as we move forward in this week and into the next. Really where the clarity is, the breakthroughs are, the progress is when you think big, when you think about career and life purpose and making the right impression to the right higher up, that is where you really shine and have the possibility to make some very tangible gains that stay with you and define your progress for a very long time to come.
Hello, fabulous Pisces. This week, we have got a myriad of energies playing out. Uh, one of the energies that I love for you has to do with Mercury and the sun moving in fellow water sign, or rather meeting in fellow water sign, Scorpio. So the fact that these two planets are meeting in fellow water sign says that you're able to utilize this energy that much more. And I think for some of you, this is going to be, like literally this could be a letter that shows up for you now that lets you know where you stand in a matter that is related to higher education, legal matters, um, matters of immigration or long distance travel. All of that is highlighted under this particular configuration. So this is about getting that letter, getting that information that gives you clarity into where you are and ultimately will help you understand where it is that you're going or desire to go next. Ultimately, this particular meeting, because it's happening in such a sort of a favorable position, especially for those of you who are um, sort of born towards the very end of your sign, um, so if you are one of those people born like right around the middle of, uh, of March, then this is going to be a time when the news is expected to be especially good, but all Pisceans should benefit from this energy. At the very least, it'll grant you clarity to help you know where it is you're going and what it is that you can do next. I spoke uh, about money <laughs> with your opposite sign, Virgo. And now I'm gonna speak about it with you. And it has to do with looking at how you feel around money and prosperity and really looking at any issues within you that might need to be healed so you can welcome in greater prosperity. And for you right about now, it might especially be an emotional issue. I do wanna say with this, the way that you elevate this energy is to be honest with yourself and particularly honest about how you are using your energy. So when you go to pay a bill or when you go to the cash register, do you start feeling like a twisting and turning like, oh my God, I'm gonna pay this out. <laughs> if you're feeling that, that is not helping you to create prosperity. <laughs> if you are fighting with about money with a spouse, um, that is not helping you to create prosperity. In fact, that is affirming lack, and that's what you don't want to do. So be mindful of that and be very mindful, especially if you're going to pay for something, to stay in an energy of absolute happiness, absolute abundance, to allow even more of that into your life. Particularly where it comes to, and you know, I have a feeling, I'm gonna say this, a very small percentage of you out there, I have a feeling as I look at this that a very small percentage of you uh, might actually go up to the cash register and, um, and something happens if you're paying with a credit card, there can be some like glitches or credit card issues. So just be mindful of that, especially as we're moving towards the later part of the week. I do believe that we're coming up to these really big shopping days, especially in the US. Um, and so, especially, you know, there can be this, okay, it's such a great deal, we gotta do this, we gotta utilize this. Be mindful of uh, your own energy around this. And also, just also be mindful that it might be that you have plenty of credit, it might be that you have plenty of money in your account, but some kind of glitch could happen. So just small, small likelihood. Uh, you're much better off paying in cash. You pay with cash, you're not accessing this energy. This energy does not speak to your finances at all if you are paying with cash. So be mindful of that. But all in all, it does look like the universe is trying to get you to pay attention to how blessed you are, that you're resourceful, and that actually the universe is providing for you in a plentiful kind of way. So it's about you accepting it and embracing it as well. Where it comes to matters of heart, uh, there might very well now be some sort of issues that come up around, um, it, this could play out a couple different ways. So one is it has to do with, um, are you gonna invest in a friend's idea? <laughs> that could be one possibility that plays out. And particularly where it comes to someone who's a friend, if you are open to meeting somebody new or just getting to know somebody, it's like, I just feel like they might be pulling some heartstrings to try and get you to finance something. 
So be mindful of that, right? Trust yourself, trust your instincts in that regard. Uh, for others of you who are in an established bond, this is going to be about that breakdown of sharing. You know, again, don't argue about money. <laughs> it is not good energy to do that, um, except wherever it is that you are in that spectrum of prosperity and understanding that prosperity really is highly relative. It is how you define it. So if you find yourself saying, okay, which bill are you paying? Which bill am I paying? How are we going to do this? Um, try not to get into some kind of weird energy dynamic with that. Just put it to the side for now and know that you can return to it in a way that is more clearly decided. You can return to it in a way that is mutually empowering and mutually affirming of the prosperity you have and the prosperity that you will create instead of um, not going in that direction. Okay, so if you find yourself feeling some strong emotions around the sharing that is taking place, it might take a breath <laughs> for you to remember what really matters and then to approach it and talk about it in a way that ultimately brings you that much closer to this person that you love. Well, thank you so much to all signs out there. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.